Welcome back to the 60th Partners Python series on the Django Web Framework. In this one, we're going to discuss how you can separate your settings file into multiple different ones. Now, there's some good reasons for doing this because it not only allows you to better organize your settings file uh, so that you have multiple files containing your various settings, but it also allows you to be able to run different settings based on the environment in which you're trying to run your Django project. Let's have a look at how you can actually structure your settings more effectively in Django. So I'm in my root folder, root project folder here called Tutorial, which is the name of this project, and because it's the name of this project and I use Start Project to create this uh, uh, folder structure here, uh, this folder inside of that is also called Tutorial. So I'm going to cd into that because that is where my settings are stored. So if I do ls again you can see what's inside there and you can see settings.py. So what I'm going to do is go back over to here and you can see in that same folder we have a settings file but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it settings. So instead of having one settings file I'm going to have a settings folder and that folder is going to have an init file in it. This helps Python to uh, spot that it should be treated as a package rather than simply a folder with Python modules or files in other words and this is going to be uh, it's, it's just going to work better with Django so let's now create the actual files we're going to use to structure all of our Django settings. So in this case I'm going to create one settings file for each of my environments in which I want to run the Django project. So for now that's only going to be development as well as production, although it, depending on your use case you may want to create staging or testing or maybe even mul multiple development settings files if you wanted to add a more comprehensive setting structure uh, than we're doing currently. So there's lots of room for sort of expanding this structure if you feel like it's lacking in any way, but for me this sort of is adequate for most of the projects that I, at least I sort of work on. So I'm going to add another file here and I'm going to say that's called prod.py. So that's going to be where all of the settings that are only relevant to production are going to be stored. And I'm going to create another one called dev.py and that is the same but for the development environment and then I'm going to create another one so another file called base now this is going to contain all of the common settings that we're going to use in spite of what environment that we're running in or at least the defaults that we want to assume that we're going to use until it's overridden by another file so that's how we're going to be able to uh, organize our settings in such a way that we can customize it for each environment but not have to repeat all the settings for each environment just so that we can tweak it a little bit. Now for in order for that to work effectively I need to go into dev.py and I'm going to say from uh, the project name tutorial.settings.base import star. So that's going to be at the start of the file so that uh, later on I can override, I'll just write a little comment here, say override uh, default or base settings here. So this is where I can customize them and because we've imported star, that means import everything within the base file that dev.py has is aware of all those settings and we can simply override it by saying for example debug is equal to false so now it's explicitly going to always be false in development which of course is not what we want so I'm going to remove that again but that was just to show you an example so I'm also going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in production because this is also uh, what we want to do here so that it also has access or also inherits from the base settings file and we're also going to create one more which is going to be local so this local settings file this can be ignored by uh, git so we can edit the git ignore file but I can edit that a little bit later what I want to do next to make sure that this project 
uh, setting structure is the same as it was before when it was just the file is I'm going to copy this all for now except for this comment, I don't really need that, I can clean the settings up a little bit here and I mean I could go through and delete these comments but it's really not a, not a huge issue just to leave them in there for now and I can just paste that all in the base so this gives us a set of defaults for us to be able to use and no matter whether we're running in development or production uh, it's always going to be using these current settings. Now usually what I prefer to do is set the uh, default the defaults in the base set settings as the production defaults where I sort of I don't want necessarily to have to change it afterwards in the production settings although it's still nice to have that production settings file if I do want to end up separating uh, some of the things. So mostly my overriding is going to be done in the base uh, settings file but uh, since we just used all of our development settings um, we just copied and pasted the development settings into the base file for now that's going to be fine and at least it's going to prove that the structure is going to work uh, assuming this project is uh, running so let's go ahead and try to run this Django project now if we try it now we may not be able to find the settings so let's do Django admin run server I would expect it to not work because it shouldn't be able to find the settings files yet and I'm going to explain why so at the moment it's just complaining because it says the uh, secret key is empty uh, it's not it's actually defined here but uh, we need to go ahead and change the environment variable which the Django admin command actually uses to find the settings because if you remember when we actually changed it from pythonmanage.py to Django admin uh, that settings file is dictated by the environment variable called the Django settings module so I'm going to do echo Django settings module to see what it is at the moment and it's still set to tutorial.settings so it's still looking in tutorial and for this settings file but what I want to do is point it to the uh, tutorial settings dev so by importing or by setting the settings to dev we are going to specifically import this file which then imports base so if, if we have any overridden settings here they're also going to be picked up whereas if we just pointed it at base then it would only import the base settings of course and not the development settings as well so we we always want to point our Django settings module variable uh, environment variable to either of the environment settings so it might be dev or production or staging or testing or anything like that but not necessarily uh, the base uh, so then what I want to do uh, to set that module is do export Django settings module and that's going to be equal to tutorial.settings.dev so that's the file that we just created and now if we run it we should see let's have a look what we see when we run it now now here it's saying we have 21 unapplied migrations but this is just because we're using SQLite 3 and it, that means that our database is stored essentially in a file on disk uh, which uses a relative path so if we go to the database settings uh, you can see it's os.path.join and uh, we could change this or we could run the migrations but uh, for now this is fine because it shows that our setting structure is working and our project is working at least to some extent uh, we just get a database error now uh, so if we go ahead and do django admin migrate so just applying all the migrations that we've already had and we're not going to have any data in our database yet of course we need to rerun the development server now and now if you're using a different backend like MySQL or Postgres which is uh, set up slightly differently then you're not going to have that issue but now that works uh, and we're sort of back to a working state albeit with no data now that wasn't an issue for me because I'm just in development and I could always load in a different database if I, want, if I wanted to sort of restore that data but uh, for now this is fine. Now at this point the setting structure does work and it is loading from our base settings file and our 
respective uh, environment settings file, so uh, either our dev or our production settings file. But there's a few more changes that we might want to make. Uh, so the first one is to the WSGI file, which is going to set the Django settings module if you're using something other than the Django development server. So in production, you'll also want to say something like dot prod to make sure that the Django settings module is set in production uh, correctly. So there's that. And then also the, with the local.py uh, there's a few things we have to do because we're not really doing anything with this yet. So the first one is I want to ignore it in the git ignore so I'm going to do forward slash tutorial forward slash so it's just tutorial settings local and that's going to be enough to be able to ignore it. I don't need to add the .py file, that should be enough for Git to be able to say uh, ignore this file. The other thing that I need to do is import the local settings into our respective environment settings files. So the way that I could do that is I could say from either the current directory or I could be explicit and say tutorial.settings.local import star now that's that would work and that is going to import the settings assuming that the file is there but and this of course would be at the end of the file so all the settings would be sort of in between here but I don't really like this approach because the local settings file is designed to be ignored by git and it's not necessarily going to be there necessarily we can't guarantee that it's actually going to be there now because we've specified it in our git ignore it's not going to be committed to the repository so to guard against the fact that it could potentially not be there I'm actually going to wrap it in a try accept block so that it's going to try to import the settings but if it fails I could either raise an exception and tell someone to create the local settings file and configure their local database settings uh, manually for example but to keep it simple I'm just going to say pass just ignore the fact that they haven't got the local settings assume they want to use the uh, committed development settings uh, just to get started and I'm also going to copy that into the uh, production settings just so uh, just so that the uh, two are the same so uh, at the moment since we're not actually overriding anything yet, these two files are going to be the same. But our settings are going to be in between these two different imports. That's pretty much how I think the settings should be configured in Django, or at least it is a good way of doing it. I'm not saying it's the only way because, uh, you know, different, different organizational structures may work better for your project depending on the scenario. But I think this is a good sort of consistent way that you can do throughout most of your Django projects and it's going to be uh, fairly uh, inclusive as to uh, most of the settings that you're sort of going to require uh, customization for. Uh, so that's how I would do it personally.